Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. This afternoon, I'm doing one of my favorite jobs, mowing with the sickle bar mower. Now, usually I'd use my Farm All H for this job because it's just a dream with the sickle bar mower. But I just got done fixing the MD, and I thought, well, I think I'll hook it up to the MD and use it that way. But before I did that, while well, I still had it hooked onto the H, I want to do some adjustment work. This mower will hook on to the H or the M interchangeably. The drawbars are the same, the whole layout's the same. So me adjusting it on the H won't change when I bolt it onto the MD. If you saw the last sickle bar mowing video, when I did the aerial shots, I realized that the bar here was not in the right position. It was back like this. And this bar should travel at a right angle to the tractor when you're mowing so that the rock guards are running right through the grass with minimal interference to the grass. They're slicing right through in a direct line. So to fix this, I set up a string along the back wheels. And it's not exact because you're dealing with lugged wheels, but I got it so that it's running as close to a right angle out from the tractor as I could. And then I took measurements on the sickle bar. And the way you do that is you measure to the back of the knife. This is per the manual. So the back of the knife to the string on this side is 21 and a half inches. This is the inner end. And the outer end here, measured to the back of the knife again, is about 20 and a quarter. That means I have about an inch and a quarter lead on the outer end of the bar, and what happens when you're mowing in the field is the bar deflects backwards a little bit from the low to the grass that it's against, and you wind up with a fairly straight cut in terms of being at a right angle to the tractor. The problem is, as with all old equipment, things wear on this. And if you look underneath the plate here, there's a breakaway spring right here, and it's attached to a, a knob or a little bearing that's on a track here. You can see the end of the track. And when the mower gets too much weight on it, say it hits a fence post or a big rock sticking up, this uh, bearing pops out of its groove and allows the whole thing to travel back so it trips the mower. I think what's happened is this bearing's worn in the groove a little bit and it's not sitting in quite the right spot. So what I did, and again manuals are really helpful, there's a threaded rod here that you can adjust the nut down on to pull this whole assembly forward a little bit and adjust the mower. I just got to put the bolts on, tighten it back up. This is one of those adjustment things that make a difference when you're mowing in less than optimal conditions. So last time I was mowing in short dry stuff and it was easy to cut. Today if the field's a little wetter, the grass is a little taller, so you really want things to be in decent shape. And there are a ton of adjustments on a sickle bar mower. I have a whole video about that that you can go back and look at if you're curious. Now we can go ahead and get this unhooked and hooked up to the MD. Like I said, the adjustments won't change. The two tractors have the same drawbar. This mower just unbolts from the drawbar on those two ears. And then there's a foot that, that swings down, which is bent. You can tell I forgot about that one time to hold the mower up. I'm going to move this swinging drawbar out of the way to mount the mower up. It's about four hours later and I got the hitch hooked up and the hydraulics working right. I had to screw around with it. Everything on the MD has to be difficult. It's not like the H where I just bolt it up and go in 10 minutes. I had to move these plates to the underside of the hitch because the mower was riding up too much. This hitch is higher because I got bigger tires on here. 
The inside shoe is running not where I'd like it. I'd like it to be running right outside the tire, but I got a wider stance on the M, so that's the way it's going to be. If I wanted to mess around with it, I could change the bolts here and slide the whole mower over, but I don't feel like doing that today. I can just deal with that. What I can't deal with here is I've changed the angle of the cutter bar, and I need to adjust that. See how it's sitting here? The front end of it's riding up like this. We really want that to be close to horizontal. And to change that, I've got these two bolts here, which will rock this whole assembly this way or that way, depending on how you want it. Changes the whole thing. So I gotta tighten this one down, loosen this one up. When guys used to cut just using sickle bars, they knew how to adjust them right on, depending on what they were cutting. So cutting conditions will change how you want the sickle bar angled. This horizontal will work just fine for me. Sometimes you want them angled up a little bit. Sometimes you want them angled down a little bit. This bolt is stuck. I've got this bar about where I want it. It's still got a little bit of upward tilt in the front. I'd much rather have that than downward tilt in the front. I've got it just about adjusted all the way. So that's where it's gonna be. The last thing I gotta do is adjust this swath or, or grass board so that it rides higher. I change the height of this depending on how tall the grass is that I'm cutting in. You want it to roll the grass that comes through here over so you've got a clear spot to run your inner shoe in on the next pass. This has got a set of holes in here so that you can adjust it. And then it's got some slop in it like this with these two ears. And that's where I want it to ride, right there. It's not a good mechanical project unless you cut yourself. You gotta shed some blood for the machine. It's true. I'll grease her up and then we should be ready to go. Finally. My gosh. Alright, let's give her a little test. Here we go. I had to give her a little washing, you know, to get the dust off. Make her all shiny. This is the field we're going to mow right up through here. The triangle field. Mower down. PTO engaged. First gear to start. down tree. I forgot to pick it up. I'm going to have to go around it. I don't think I can move it by hand. Oh, how annoying. And I think I got her set just right. Grass is flowing right through it. Everything sounds nice. The mower sounds nice. The tractor sounds nice. Thank you. 
is that right there. You got to keep it running right on the edge of the grass because if it runs in the cut grass, it's going to wad and clog up. See, I ran over too far now. Watch, I'll run into some cut grass and you can see. Let me inch it over here. See where it's catching it? Don't want to do that. If that happens, you got to back her up and let the clock fall off. Start over again. alone. I don't know. It looks like it might rain over there to the west. It's coming this way. Eh. sounds better than she's ever sounded. I think having the valves ground right and having that head treated the way that it should and a good head gasket that's not blown have made a world of difference. It sounds amazing. How low will she go anyway? That's how low she'll go. I'll just let you listen to that. When you can count the cylinders firing. That's a smooth running engine. I'm not, I'm not tooting my own horn, but sometimes, you know, you just gotta say all those hours I spent they were kind of worthwhile. All right, let's get back to work.
zip right up and I think they're gonna run into me and then they make a cut turn. They are awesome to watch. Look at them all, wow. is you get a nice clean cut at the end but you pick up some grass and then when you're coming into the point starting a cut you can do the same thing see how it kind of clogs up that time I got a good cut but sometimes it'll clog up point again and I'll show you the other option. You can float it like that and then when you come in to start your cut you can do the same thing. You can float it till it gets to the full width and then drop it. The advantage is that the mower bar doesn't clog up at all but you leave a little sloppier cut. So I prefer to take the extra time and do it the first way where you have to go back and forth and unclog the cutter bar because it looks neater. Look at that rain coming down over there. Kind of cool to watch the weather. No thunder or lightning, just rain this time. You can see it falling right down. And it's starting to drop, drop, drop too. Too. It's starting to sprinkle. It's a good job to get done. To me, clipping a field like this, I'm not going to make hay out of it. It's like money in the bank because all this that I put on the ground here is going to help the grass grow next spring. It insulates the top of the soil. It's that. You know, it's good stuff. There's nothing like clipping a field to make it come back nice the next time it grows. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's just being on the tractor for an afternoon. Always enjoyable. I'll see you next time.